Assalamu alaikum and hello. Let us begin with our second lesson of Pakistan geography, the natural topography. Okay, now let's understand what is topography. Topography is a study and description of the surface features of the land which could be both natural and artificial. In this chapter, we'll be dealing with the natural features. Natural features uh, could be mountains, rivers, glaciers, hills, etc. And artificial features could be uh, your roads, highways, canals, dams, etc. The land of Pakistan can be divided into six natural topographical areas that is the northern mountains and the northwestern mountains looking at the map this is these are the northern north, northern mountains and the northwestern mountains the western mountains the balochistan plateau the botwa plateau and the salt range the indus plains the desert areas now keeping the mind uh, keeping uh, the map of pakistan in your mind it will be easy to remember uh, what top topographical areas pakistan is divided into in the north there would be mountains that is the northern mountains and northwestern mountains coming down western mountains uh, here then uh, the balochistan plateau under them then the Potwa plateau and the salt range in the um, central part of pakistan coming down below um, the Indus Plain and the desert area on either, uh, areas on either sides. Alright, so the northern mountains and the northwestern mountains are divided into three ranges. The first, Karakoram Range, Himalayas, which is further divided into Sivalix, Lesser or Outer Himalayas, Central Himalayas. We'll discuss that in detail when we look at Himalayas. Then, uh, the Hindu Kash. Now, the Hindu Kash are the northwestern mountains, whereas Himalayas and the Karakoram range are the north, northern mountains of Pakistan. Uh, beginning with the Karakoram range, Karakoram range, Karakoram actually means black gravel and range is a series of mountains. So, this range runs from east to west and it runs from Hunza to the Shiok River. The average altitude of the mountains here is 6000 meters and uh, K2, which is uh, the other name of K2 is Mount Godwin Austin, is situated in this range with a height of 8610 meters. Now, you got to remember the height of this mountainous range, a uh, mountain as well as its location and because that comes in the exams um, you know, for marking on the map. Then uh, the precipitation here is mostly in the form of snow. Uh, why? Because obviously the height, the altitude of the mountains is pretty understandable. The population density here is low, uh, difficult to survive because of the climatic conditions, severe climatic conditions. Mountain peaks are only open during summers. Agriculture is practiced here but only in the valleys where water is plentiful and the kinds of crops that are grown here are apples, barley and millets. Cattle breeding is uh, one occupation that people can practice living in this range. Then uh, one of the significant features of this range is that uh, they are an attraction for the scientists, the mountaineers because of their challenging landscape and uh, it, this range opens up an, a, a highway to China and uh, you know the Khunjara Pass which connects Pakistan to China is also located in this range which is a, a route to economic and cultural prosperity. Now on the map as far as the map is concerned uh, the things that you need to learn from the Karakoram range is the Karakoram range itself that is the location of the Karakoram range K2 and uh, um, and I'll be you know showing you how to learn to mark locate uh, K2 uh, the Karakoram range the Khunjara pass on the map so for that let's uh, go to the map of Pakistan Okay, so this is where the Karakoram range is situated, on the north, northern part of Pakistan. Okay, so this is where, northeastern part. Okay, so you got to remember this area. Main features on the map that you got to study about the Karakoram features are, uh, uh, Karakoram range is the Kunjara Pass and the K2 and the Karakoram range itself. So where is K2? This is K2. Where is Kunjara Pass? This is Kunjara Pass. You got to remember the location of Kunjara Pass also and K2. Now how will you remember it? Look at this uh, outline map of Pakistan. This hump. This hump like uh, feature. This hump where it, you know, it starts going downwards. This is the place where on the border of Pakistan and China where the Kunjara Pass is located. Then when it comes down and then it dives down you know forms a depression and then goes up again 
where it goes up again that is where k2 is located so you can mark k2 there so if you remember it this way it will become easier now one more thing this is the first hump now pakistan has got one hump and then there is there is another hump that goes on the other side but this is the first hump where you have to mark uh, the khunjara pass and the k2 just about this depression Okay, now let's talk about the Himalayas. The Himalayas is the longest range and uh, it runs continuously for about 2500 kilometers from east to west. And the average altitude of uh, the mountain situated in this range is around 4000 meters. Himalayas is further divided into Sivaliks, the lesser or the lower Himalayas and the central Himalayas. To understand this better, let us look at the map of Pakistan. Okay, so this is where the Himalayan range lies and it's divided into three. The Sivaliks are situated here, the lowermost portion and then uh, in the center are the uh, lesser or the outer Himalayas and on top is the central Himalayas. The central Himalayas are located between the Karakuram range and the um, lower or the lesser Himalayas. The lower or the lesser Himalayas are also called as the Pir Panjal range. So, you know, depending upon, uh, you know, the uh, location of these ranges, you can understand that as you move towards the north, the altitude of the mountains would increase. And as you move towards the south, the altitude of the mountains would decrease. So, uh, uh, you know, learning their altitudes in this manner would become easy. Okay, so the, the average height of the mountains in the Savaliks is 600 to 1200 meters, obviously because it's the lowest um, the mountain <coughs> um, and the lesser and the lower Himalayas, the mountains there extend to 1800 to 4500 meters. One important uh, thing about the mountains here is they are a great tourist attraction. Mari, Nathya Gali and Gora Gali are located in this range which is also known by the Peer Panjal range. And uh, the central Himalayas, the central Himalayas, as I already discussed, uh, this is the, uh, you know, part of the Himalayas which lies between the Pir Panjal range and the Karakoram range. And uh, the mountains in this range are mostly snow-capped, uh, given the height. Then uh, the, the um, mountains are steep-sided uh, peaks and um, huge glaciers flow in this region. And uh, the natural vegetation is found in the valleys only. And the highest peak that is located in this region in Pakistan is the Nanga Parbat, which is 8126 meters. Otherwise, we already know that uh, the tallest mountain of the world is situated in uh, the Himalayas, which is uh, the Mount Everest. Uh, but uh, the highest peak of the Himalayas in Pakistan is the Nanga Parbat. So you got to remember that as well as its height and how to mark it or where to mark it on the map. That is also what you have to learn. All right, so looking at the map of Pakistan, as far as uh, the Himalayan range is concerned, um, uh, the important uh, mountain that you got to learn, uh, its location on the map is the Nanga Parbat. So how do you learn it? Uh, look at the map of Pakistan here. See, this is the north uh, westernmost projection. And if you bring your pencil down here, a little southwards here, this way, and then this, uh, uh, you know, the uh, a little hill and bring it down here like this so this is where you can locate Nanga Parvat and it's easy to remember this way so you got to remember this uh, hump very very well Alright, so the third mountain range, the Hindu Kash range. The Hindu Kash range, unlike uh, the Karakuram and the Himalayas, it runs from north to south. And it lies where the Afghanistan and China border meet on the Pakistan territory. The average altitude of the mountains in this region is around 5000 meters. The important mountain that is found here is Sirichmir. And you got to remember the location of Sirichmir also on this range and the, and the location of the range itself. Uh, so these are the two important uh, features. Uh, and then uh, in this range glaciers are found um, and not rivers because of the height and the climate then uh, the valleys that are found here is the Savat Valley, Deer and Chitral as well the drainage features uh, are uh, that uh, you know the valleys have steep sides and uh, fast flowing rivers flow through them uh, one very important feature of this range is that uh, a number of 
passes are found here passes which are of historical importance and also military significance historical importance as in alexander the great mahmud ghazni ghoris and timurlain and our king babur of the mughal empire you know all of them you had utilized these passes from moving from one region to another so they are still present those passes are still present so they have that historical significance All right so the passes found in this region that is the Hindu Kush range are the Chandur Pass, Shangla Pass and the Lower Lower Rai Pass now uh, you got to remember the names of the passes and also the areas that they connect okay so it's a little um, tricky but if you learn them through ab- making abbreviations like this it will become easy the Chandur Pass uh, connects Gilgit with Chitral so SD connects GC then shangla pass connects the savat valley with the upper part of the indus valley so you can write shangla sl connects sv with iv and lower i pass it connects chitral with the savat valley and the peshawar valley so l connects c with sv and pv so in this way it will be easier to memorize okay the mountains that are situated in this range are usually bare that is no vegetation is found there but there are rich forests only in the south eastern part of this range and where rice is cultivated now rice is cultivated usually on terraced fields which is called as terrace farming which we'll be discussing later on in the other chapters of geography now um uh, and uh, the terrace fields are located where in the valleys of chitral savat and deer okay so okay so this is the location of the hindu kush range and it it runs from north to south so this is the location you got to remember this now what are the things that you are uh, the features on the map that you got to learn about this range uh, we'll be discussing it when we look at the other map of pakistan okay so as far as um, hindu kush range is concerned the things that you got to remember uh, are you know the terish meet the mountain 7708 meters this is the terish meet mountain where and you have to learn to locate it here on the map so it's easy see the north western portion of pakistan this projection locate terish meet here then where is uh, the uh, uh, other passes a uh, shandur pass a little towards the eastern uh, side of terish meet this is the shandur pass then go down here across this projection you know this region this is the lower i pass done so see it's so easy peasy if you learn it this way okay coming on to the okay coming on to the valleys valleys that are found in these ranges in the hindu kush we already discussed savat chitral and deer are located in karakoram the valleys that are found are gilgit hunza and baltistan in the himalayas the valleys that are located are mari and galis and the kagan you got to remember them just by heart them they'll help you in your exams all right so let's let's now discuss the importance of the northern mountains uh, the northern mountains are snow capped and when the snow melts it uh, drains into uh, the river indus and its tributaries which helps to irrigate the indus plain secondly uh, let's talk about the historical passes a uh, number of historical passes as we discussed are present in uh, the northern mountains which connect pakistan with china and also afghanistan with china it's the kunjarab pass which connects pakistan with china and uh, i did not mention this uh, that it's the khyber pass which connects pakistan with afghanistan okay then um, they also serve as a national border to china and the central asian republics or the central asian states a uh, sort of a shield to china and the central asian states um, and um, the karakoram highway which is a road to economic prosperity also lies in these mountains fourthly um, they are a source of minerals like timber and fruits which provide raw materials to the furniture paper chipboard and chemical industries the mountain peaks protect pakistan from the cold winds of central asia uh, finally you know uh, the scenic beauty it's uh, beautiful and, uh, and this promotes tourism um, and also is a you know source of attraction for all the nature lovers from within pakistan and also all over the world now let us look at the problems faced by the people or uh, by this region or the people living in this region the economy of this region is developed on traditional lines therefore the economic growth rate is very slow but the population growth rate is very high therefore there is a clash here and therefore the per capita income is low uh, now people living in this area find a lot of difficulty uh, because infrastructure is not developed that is no proper roads buildings bridges etc 
people mainly depend upon agriculture and cattle breeding um, you know uh, what they grow is wheat rice barley maize and vegetables uh, you got to remember all of this if you remember it this way you know in the form of these points take a snapshot of this page it will be easy for you i'm telling you you know once you write it down in points things become very very easy um now in winters um the cottage and small scale industries become operational and what sort of industries carpet industries embroidered rugs industries then uh, handicraft industries and they serve to be you know a major tourist attraction other industries that is other than them are the sugar refining industries vegetable oil making grains processing etc this region has an immense hydroelectric potential but because of insufficient supply of capital you know this uh, uh, potential is not being tapped fully uh, another important uh, problem uh, is that the literacy level of these uh, of the people in this region is very low so the manpower required to operate these uh, you know the system um, is not available and therefore uh, the hydroelectric potential is not being tapped properly and then improper roads it's already been discussed earlier another important uh, problem faced by the people and this region in uh, is uh, the environmental problem tourism is an industry but if it's not managed properly it can cause a lot of pollution and pollution on the land on the rivers and also on the in the air so there is no proper system of garbage disposal garbage is everywhere those of you who have visited this area must be aware of it and deforestation that is cutting down of trees why to feed the industries and also to feed the livestock um which is good economically but if it's not uh, if it's done at a very rapid rate then it can cause a number of other problems like landsliding because it leads to increase in soil erosion now the water there is also very polluted and polluted water consuming and can cause a lot of diseases so overall you know these are all the problems that the people or that area uh, suffers from all right so with this we come to the end of the uh, lesson number 2 and in this lesson number 2 that is the two natural topographical features of pakistan we discussed the northern mountains and the northwestern mountains a lot still remains to be discussed and uh, i'll be discussing that you know new lessons will be coming very soon um but in this lesson what you got to learn is the karakoram range the himalayan range its subdivisions the hindukush range and everything that i discussed about uh, uh, regarding the map that is the mount and peaks the passes um you know the position of these ranges all this has to be learned very well okay I, so i hope i was able to make this lesson easy for easy and interesting for all of you uh, if you liked it so please subscribe to my channel uh, press the like button and also give me you know your comments as to uh, what next do you want me to focus more on and that would be very helpful thank you so much